Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt. This is off the playbook, bringing you my 2012 NFL mock draft video. This is the January edition. So let's get started by looking at the mock draft rules. Selections are made if I were the GM and the coach, and they're also made off need and not best player available. So let's start with the Indianapolis Colts, who hold the number one pick. The Colts look like they're going to be starting from scratch, so why not start with Andrew Luck? This guy can make all the throws, can make every pass that you want. But what I like is his athleticism, his Aaron Rodgers-like athleticism out the pocket. And I think that right there, combined with his amazing passing ability, makes him one of the best prospects in this draft. The Rams own the second pick. I actually like their wide receiver, so I'm going to go with tackle Matt Khalil out of USC. I think this guy is a stud. 6'5", 285 pounds. I know they have Roger Saffo right now at the left spot, but you have to secure your investment in Sam Bradford. And to give him every opportunity to be successful, you have to strengthen that offensive line. Khalil can find a spot for the Rams. Next up are the Minnesota Vikings, and I know they have Christian Ponder at QB, but I'm going defense. Morris Claiborne, corner out of LSU, reminds me a lot of Dale Carter, who had an outstanding career for Kansas City and out there in Denver. Claiborne is a guy that has ball skills, and that's what you need in the secondary when you play in a division with the Lions, Packers, and an improving Bear squad. Plus, all the Vikings secondary players seem to have trouble staying healthy and have bad knees, and that's not what you want out of your secondary. The Browns own two picks in the first round, and I actually like Colt McCoy, so I'm giving him help with Justin Blackman, a guy out of Oklahoma State that reminds me of Terrell Owens with better hands. Very explosive, runs great routes, and has great hands. All three facets of his game is outstanding, and that's going to give that Browns offense some firepower. You team him up with Greg Little, and now Colt McCoy has some legitimate weapons to get the football downfield. Next up are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going straight defense. Vontez Burfecht, I like this guy a lot. I can care less what everybody else says. He's going to be my starting linebacker. This guy is a ferocious hitter. Reminds me a lot of Ray Lewis and his explosive ability on defense. Yes, he can calm down a little bit, but you want your crazy and aggressive guys on the defense side of the football. And I think this guy will be a stud at the next level. If I'm the Washington Redskins, I'm smiling from ear to ear because I didn't even have to trade up to get the Heisman Trophy winner, Robert Griffin III. I think he fits perfectly in that Redskins offense. He has the mobility to get out there on the bootlegs. He has the deep ball accuracy, and he's smart with the football. And with that, coupled with a strong running game, the Redskins offense will look a lot better in 2012. Jacksonville is next up and Blaine Gabbert aside you still have to get receiving targets on the roster Elshon Jeffrey is a guy that's 6'4 230 pounds great body control explosive after the catch catches everything with his hands and I like that about a wide receiver he's big and physical so I think this will be a great selection for Jacksonville and it gives Blaine Gabbert no excuses this year to see progress the Panthers are next up, and I know they need defense, but they also need another wide receiving threat. Michael Floyd out of Notre Dame has the explosiveness to open up this offense. Plus, you need insurance for when and if Steve Smith decides to hang him up in the near future. Floyd gives Cam Newton another target that he can grow with. That's just going to open up that passing game. Plus, I think they can address defense in the later rounds. The Dolphins just hired their head coach, Joe Philbin, so I think they bring in a veteran guy to be QB. So I'm going with Jonathan Martin. They're going to solidify that offensive line. Imagine the O-line that has Jake Long, Jonathan Martin on the other side, Pouncey in the middle. This offensive line will be able to keep upright whoever is going to be back there quarterback. So you have to start up front. I think Martin would be a great selection. Looking at the Buffalo Bills needs, they can go defensive line, but they can also go offensive tackle. And I think that's where they go to protect their investment in Fitzpatrick. Raleigh Reef is a guy that I really like. You see this guy just drive blocking. Any old lineman you get out of the Iowa program is going to be a solid pro. I think that type of guy right there fitting in that offense is going to open up more running room for C.J. Spiller and company. The Kansas City Chiefs have made Romeo Cornell their head coach. So with a defensive-minded head coach, you got to go defense Luke Kukley out of Boston College, 6'2", 235 pounds, made a zillion tackle, tackles at Boston College, and you fit him in at 3-4 defense at the inside linebacker spot and team him up with Derek Johnson, Justin Houston, and Tom Bailey on the, on the outside, this linebacking core, like I said in the first video, will be one to be reckoned with. The Seahawks come into this draft with a couple of needs, so I'm going to go with one need, the defensive line. I'm going defensive tackle Devon Steele. You team him up next to 
Brandon Mabane, and that defensive interior will be ferocious. By adding this Nittany Lion to the defensive front four, they're going to be able to get pushed from the interior, and that's going to free up more one-on-one -on -one opportunities for those outstanding defensive ends. The Cardinals are next on the clock, and they can go offensive line, but let's go defense. Courtney Upshaw, you saw him wreak havoc against LSU in the championship game. One of those throwback linebackers that's relentless, looks to tackle and hits you, and you go down in a hurry. I think adding this type of outside rusher in that 3-4 defense could prove to be a huge success for the Cardinals. I think most of the Cowboys' needs are on defense, so let's start with the defensive line. Michael Brockers, I think he's going to fly up the draft board, 6'6", 306 pounds, would be a perfect five technique in that 3-4 defense. And if they can get pushed from the interior, we know they have the outside rushers in DeMarcus Ware and coming to get there, and that secondary will look a lot better if they're able to get to the quarterback. The Eagles can go with some offensive line help, but I'm going with their biggest need, which is linebacker Zach Brown. Outside linebacker from North Carolina. This guy brings a lot of speed to the position. He's going to be one of the fastest linebackers in the draft. He can also catch interceptions, so he brings you that versatility to help you out in coverage, so he can also be an effective blitzer. Should help out that Eagles front seven. The New York Jets are on the clock, and they have to find a way to get to the quarterback. Melvin Ingram is a guy that was chaos on wheels. I know I said that about Muhammad Wilkerson last year. So you bring this guy to the defense, and this is a guy that will live in the backfield, always has a knack for the big play, and when you have that type of pressure coming from the outside, that Jets defense will get back to prominence like it was two seasons ago. The Bengals own two first-round selections, and last year they struggled on the interior of their offensive line, which is why I'm giving them David DeCastro, a guy that's very athletic, can get around on those pulling plays, those trap plays, and does a great job of stonewalling defenders at the point of attack. That's going to plow open that run game once again, and the Bengals will be able to operate off play action. Last year, the San Diego Chargers had some issues getting to the quarterback, which is why I'm adding Nick Perry, defensive end slash outside linebacker from USC. This guy gets to the quarterback in a hurry. Great first step, great burst off the line of scrimmage. And with that type of closing speed, he's going to remind some of Sean Merriman. The Bears offense struggled when they lost Forte and also Jay Cutler for the season, but they really struggled because they couldn't own the middle of the field, and I think that's where Dwayne Allen helps out. This guy is an explosive playmaker from the tight end position, and when you have a good tight end, you see right now in this day and age in the NFL, teams that have effective tight end play are teams that go deep into the playoffs. Next up are the Tennessee Titans, and it seems like every year we're going defensive line with the Titans, but Quentin Coppos right now is a guy they can't pass up, and he's playing his best football on the back half of the season. When you have that type of burst off the line of scrimmage and that type of length at the defensive end spot, you can set the edge in the running game. You can also create pass rushing opportunities and getting strip sacks and fumbles. I think he's going to be a valuable asset for the Titans. The Bengals are on the clock with their second selection in the first round. So let's go into the secondary with a guy I think fits perfectly in Mike Zimmer's aggressive defense. Janoris Jenkins reminds me a lot of Asante Samuel in his ability to jump routes, make up, make interceptions, and also play tight man press. I like him a lot. Cleveland is back on the clock with their second first round selection. Let's go offense again. I'm still giving help to Colt McCoy because I think he's a solid quarterback. Trent Richardson, they need help in the backfield. And this guy is the complete back because he does everything well. He blocks well. He catches the football out of the backfield very well. And he has that burst to take it the distance and the strength to break tackles. Reminds me a lot of Ernest Biner. And Browns fans appreciate that compliment because that guy did a lot of good things for Cleveland. The Lions are next up on the clock, and I'm going offensive line. I'm going with the center, Peter Kahn's out of Wisconsin. Dominic Riola is a guy that's getting up there in age, and he's not that good anyway. Kahn's is going to be a guy that can plow open holes in the running game, does a great job in pass protection. I think he's going to be a tremendous asset for the Lions. With the age that's on this roster, they can go any way with this pick, but the Steelers will go offensive line. Cordy Glenn, a guard tackle guy out of Georgia, played tackle in college but also played guard, but he brings that type of versatility. I think he's a better fit on the interior, and the Steelers will think so as well, and this guy will be a fixture on that offensive line. The Broncos are next on the clock, and they can get help for Tim Tebow, but I'm going with the defensive pick. Stephon Gilmore, another need cornerback. I've liked this guy since he set foot on campus. Tremendous ball skills and is not afraid to help out and run support, and that's what you want out of a corner. Plus, Champ Bailey is getting up there in age, and it's time to start thinking about a guy to groom underneath him, and Gilmore will be a perfect fit for the Broncos. 
The Houston Texans are next on the clock, and I have them going with an offensive player, Ruben Randall out of LSU. The reason why I have him going right here in the first is due to the fact that the Texans pick later on in the second round, and I don't think Randall will last that long, and they need another playmaker outside of Andre Johnson. I think this guy would be a perfect fit for that Texans offense. The Patriots are on the clock, and this pick comes from the New Orleans Saints with the trade they made last season. Andre Branch, defensive end out of Clemson. This guy has tremendous bursts. Again, right off the line of scrimmage and that closing speed. When you evaluate a defensive end prospect, you look at closing speed to the quarterback and how they can flatline once they get past the tackle. He does a great job of that, and plus the Patriots need a much-needed youth movement on that defensive front. The Packers are next up, and I think they go to the defensive side of the football Afonso Denard, cornerback out of Nebraska, a guy that's very physical, good size, 5'10", 205, and you know he can tackle coming out of Nebraska, but he has very underrated awareness, and I think with that awareness and quickness to close on the football makes him a special talent. I look at the 49ers needing a deep threat on offense. Crabtree is not that type of speed guy. Kendall Wright is tremendous speed downfield and once he gets the football in his hands he's a threat to take it the distance and with that type of athleticism and playmaking threat the 49ers passing game will look a lot better in 2012. The Ravens are on the clock and I'm going with Ray Lewis's successor Dante Hightower this guy out of Alabama going to play on the interior 6'4 260 plays downhill and that's what they need if they can get two more years out of Ray Lewis to groom this young man they're going to not miss a beat with him as their defensive leader. Patriots are back on the clock with their second first round selection. I'm going with Drake Kirkpatrick out of Alabama, a guy that's falling down the draft board due to some off the field issues, but realistically he doesn't catch interceptions and he doesn't have the ball skill of the cornerbacks I have ranked ahead of him, but he does tackle very well. I think with that type of versatility, you look for Bill Belichick to get him involved in that defense. The Giants are next on the clock, and I know they have O.C. Yumiyor, but he's either always hurt or wanting a new contract, so why not get his replacement in Whitney Merciless? This guy had double-digit sacks for the Illini, and his best football is ahead of him. You throw him in that rotation with Pierre Paul and Tuck, and you have a guy that can give you double-digit sack production. The New Orleans Saints have a second-round selection, so I'm going with Outside linebacker Levante David, this guy is a tackling machine, great instincts to the football, and is a very solid tackler. And the Saints need outside linebackers that are not afraid of contact. He does a great job of playing downhill, and that's going to help out that Saints defense as a whole. The Falcons are also on the clock in the second round, so I'm giving them one of my favorite tight end prospects, Orson Charles. This guy is a Shannon Sharp clone, physical can run routes he also is active as a blocker so he's not just one of those guys that wants to get out there and run routes he can do both but it's his pass catching ability and his ability to make plays after the catch which makes him a threat and you add that to that falcons offense and this should be no reason why matt ryan shouldn't progress next season raiders are on the clock in the fifth round i'm giving them one of my favorite safety prospects duke Ianacho out of san jose state he may not last until the fifth round so if the Raiders are fortunate enough to get him, they're getting a tremendous player on defense that can help them out in the running game and in the passing game and also on special teams. For more football game plan coverage, visit our website, footballgameplan.com. You can become a fan of ours on Facebook. Just search football game plan. Follow me on Twitter at FBall Game Plan and also subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is called the Football Game Plan Network at youtube.com slash football game plan. Every Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, check me out on the Football Game Plan Radio Show located at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan. And for more draft analysis, check our draft analyst, Chris James. Follow him on Twitter at CJ49 and also view his articles at footballgameplan.com slash draft. And every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, listen to his draft prospects preview show at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan.